liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixon. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing all right. Enjoying this Manhattan over here. Yeah. So I bought uh, sweet vermouth, and it only lasts about a month in the fridge after you open it. Yeah. So um, we have a month to drink as many Manhattans as we can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, they're good, so I can definitely indulge on some Manhattans. Yeah. You know, it. it's probably, it, I should probably feel better that um, that I drink, I don't drink so much now that I can buy sweet and dry vermouth at the same time and not have to worry about <laughs> them going, going bad. bad. Now you have to be concerned <laughs> about that. Have mart- <laughs> enough martinis in Manhattans in a month or so that uh, yeah. that I don't have to feel bad about it. Although um, the dry vermouth, there's not as big a drop off in flavor um, over time as there is with the sweet vermouth. But ah. <laughs> uh, you still know, still like to keep it fresh. Yeah, I um, I don't know how long those bitters have been, uh, the Angostura bitters that that you use in a Manhattan. No. I don't know how long those have been in my cabinets, though. No. I don't know if they go bad or not. It seems to smell like it's supposed to, and since that's really what the purpose of it is, is to add um, odor, yeah. uh, uh-huh. I guess they're okay. And you only put a couple of drops. It can't possibly like make you <laughs> sick or something. Right. <laughs> well, the drink tastes really good. So. good. Always enjoy a good Manhattan. Yeah. So. It's been a while since I've made them regularly. Yeah. yeah. But it, it's one of those... Um, it's one of those cocktails, like, so I, I love the old cocktails, right? Like the um, martinis and Manhattans and sidecars and things like that. Because yeah. um, they're simple. And I guess sidecar is technically a sour, not a cocktail. Yeah. If you, if you, if <laughs> if you, you want to get, get technical. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, it, they, I don't know, they're, they're just simple. Yeah. Like just a couple of ingredients. Yeah. And particularly the Manhattan is one that stands out to me because... Like the end result, it, so it's really only two ingredients, yeah. right? Like you had you had a couple of drops of bitters, but yeah. um, it's really just the whiskey and the sweet vermouth. Yeah. But somehow there's like some magic that happens when you put them together or whatever <laughs> that you end up with this product in the end that doesn't taste like whiskey or sweet vermouth yeah. or it's its own thing entirely. Yeah. It, yeah, it yeah. comes out as being something completely different. Yeah. And, uh, and they're really good. They are really good. <laughs> so, um, I, that's the one that is the most extreme in that way. Yeah. Like a martini really tastes like gin. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's something a little off with, about it, with but small it, with a yeah. small variation. Um, but yeah. you, you definitely have to pick your gin carefully with yeah. with the martini. But yeah. the Manhattan, you can throw almost any whiskey in it. Yeah, yeah, and it's gonna come out like a Manhattan. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and the type of vermouth that you get doesn't matter as much either. Although the, around here, there's really only like two or three options that you can buy regularly anyway, so yeah. you don't have a lot of choices. Although like. People that really get into this can really get into their vermouths. Like you can oh, yeah. get vermouths shipped from all. Well, you can't here because because <laughs> of ABC. Yeah, yeah but um, you can get vermouths shipped from from all over the place that are uh, have their own like distinct flavor profiles. I suppose. Yeah, I don't know because I mean this is just what I've read. I yeah. haven't experienced. <laughs> you this haven't myself. got to do it yourself. You yeah. Know? I hear you. Um, so there, <laughs> there's our Manhattan introduction. Um, Absolutely. Simple cocktail, really good. Really good. Yeah. And get real maraschino cherries, not those candied cherries that you buy at Walmart or whatever. <laughs> the ones that are like neon colored. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Any, anything neon red probably shouldn't go in your body anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, so how do you want to get this started? Sorry we didn't come out yesterday. It was a... It was kind it, of a... I know it was a rough day for me. Yeah, yeah. It was a long day for me, too. We just... Uh, we, we talked last night, and we were like, we could do this, but neither of us was... We weren't it, really either in the mood. Yeah, it would have been a low-energy podcast. We didn't want to do that. Yeah, absolutely. No, can't can't, can't have time. that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um... So here we are. <laughs> yeah, so here we are. Full On Saturday. <laughs> giving, giving up our Saturday for the Full. podcast. Full of energy in Manhattan. Yeah, Ready I'm not to- full of Manhattan yet, but I'm working on it. <laughs> I'm working on it too. <laughs> um, so where you want, where do you want to start? I'll start at Roe v. Wade, man. Um, well, that's still going on. Yeah, I. I all it's right, still so, going on like it's yeah. like a thing that just like goes on. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
So uh, it, it is it is confusing to me uh, a little bit because I'm I'm certain that the the leak is a distraction. Yeah. But I can't figure out from what. Yeah. And or, that makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> it well, gives me an uncomfortableness. Well, that and and why? Because the timing the timing is bad politically because this you've already got all of this angst over it and then the, and the whole idea of this being a rallying cry for Democrats to help, mm -hmm. is to help them with the midterms. Yeah. And the way the news cycle works, and they know this, is this will be out of the news cycle by then. Yeah. Um, um, there's also the theory that it was a, a, a conservative that leaked it to prevent um, justices from waffling. Yeah, I've um, heard that floated. Uh, well, okay, so, but here, I, I've been thinking about this a bit. I, I, I agree. I think that it's too soon. But it's not really over with this. Yeah. So, because you'll get another bump when the actual decision comes out. That's true. Um, in a couple of months, but even then, like you're you're three you're months plus from the election. From the, yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't. Yeah. Um, and so then the question is: Is it a distraction from the Russia Ukraine thing? Yeah. Well, it's it's hard to say. Um, I don't think so. I mean the. The nation was already kind of moving on from that. Like, yeah. that's another thing that's still going on, and we're still funding it tremendously, and we'll get back on that oh, later. Yeah, we're but we're talking about that. Um, but it, you know, it, it's not something that needed. Uh, it, it, there wasn't. No it didn't need, need to a pull big away. distraction. Yeah, yeah. We, there was no need to pull away from that. Yeah. Um. So then the the question is, you know, is it about the economy? Like. Is it a distraction from how bad the economy is? And that's a possibility, but actually, I think the Russia-Ukraine thing provided a better distraction because yeah. it also provided an excuse. Well, that's just lot. it. Because anybody that thinks that the Roe v. Wade thing is going to overshadow the economy has not studied history. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, the the economy, the economy is the biggest thing that affects people directly mm -hmm. like it's it's absolutely like when you can when gas is going up and like it's hurting your pocketbook it's hurting your pocketbook whether people can get abortions or not yeah <laughs> like it's just that's it's it it won't work as far as a distraction from that mm -hmm. and nothing will like i mean the, the well there's one thing that will the only thing that will work as a distraction against the economy is war yeah um that's that's the only thing that i can think of at least that that can be done politically to fix the fix people from fixating on the economy. Mm. Um, well, it it, be, it becomes well, like I said, in this one, it's it's also an excuse for the bad economy. Yeah, like uh, well, and when I say that, I mean like us being directly involved in war. Yeah. Like um, I don't be, mean because then it becomes a um it, it becomes this patriotic thing to like suck it up, tighten yeah, your belt. So absolutely. The, you know, you can, can you can make a pitch for that. But this deal with Ukraine doesn't do that. But I Not mean they're yet. they're making they're making a pitch for that. I mean they're trying to push, you know, that you know that the the reason the economy's so bad is because of Ukraine and we just need to to endure this for the Ukrainians, but people aren't buying that. Like yeah. that's not most people are like, no, I'm not. That's not okay. <laughs> like, yeah. Did we just shift gears? Since do I need to play Ukraine clips now and come back around? To the <laughs> I don't other know. Stuff? We did kind of waffle there. <laughs> we um, started talking about Roe v. Wade and what the distraction is. Well, uh, so yeah. Um, let, well, let's come back to that because uh, it does. It does make you wonder, like, yeah. like because this was, you've got to believe that this was on some level done intentionally mm -hmm. by somebody. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, it was absolutely. absolutely done intentionally by somebody. And then you're trying to get into, okay, mm -hmm. well, what's the timing and why? Yeah. And, and I don't, I'm with you, I don't have a legit answer to that question. Mm -hmm. But, but it has to be something. Yeah. Um, so then what about the leaker? Yeah. How, what do you think? Uh, what do you think should be done in the case of the leaker? I'm all for all leaks all the time. So, yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I don't have a problem with not doing anything about the leaker if they can figure out who it is. Yeah. Um, and I question, I, I think they could, if they wanted to, I think they could, if they there, wanted there's to, there's a limited number of people that would have had access to this information. So. Yeah. But, but how do you figure out who it is not, without jeopardizing 
like sources and stuff like that because there are people who know who this was. Mm -hmm. um, the people it was leaked to would know who leaked it to them. Oh, yeah. But I mean, internally, I think that they could figure it out through process of elimination yeah, or at maybe. least get it down to a very small number of people. Yeah, but like, do you think they could refine it down enough to prosecute them? Like, um, like that solidly? I think that they could. I don't think they have any interest in well, it. Well, I don't think they have any interest in doing that either. Um, but um, but I, I'm mostly with you. I mean, I th I'm I'm in favor of, of leaks generally. Yeah. Um, and I am not sure why. So I've been trying to think about why it's important to keep um, these kind of internal court proceedings quiet. Yeah. And... Um, so and you I, don't I think cause it's an uprising. Like, well, <laughs> yeah, that might be it. Uh, that might be the real reason. But I, yeah. I think that you could make a good uh, a good argument that um, you don't want to compromise the process. Yeah. And that uh, having this information out in the public compromises the process. Yeah. Um, and it's certainly this in, in this case, it certainly compromised the process because a lot of these judges are receiving death threats and so forth about this. Like, yeah. at, at what point do they start thinking, well, maybe um, what the Constitution says isn't as important to me as like my family's lives <laughs> <All right>. or whatever? <laughs> well, that's um, true. And so, it, you know, it, it could this leak. I mean, they've all been really strong about it publicly and said, well, you know, this isn't going to change anything or or something along those lines. Yeah. Um, but you kind of have to wonder. Yeah. I mean, saying that and, and acting on that are two different things. Yeah. So, um, and anybody who's threatening, uh, judges lives on this, like shame on you. Yeah. Good grief. Yeah. I like there, there's a strong, um, okay. So, you know, the, uh, the libertarian party, this, the national party platform, Plank. Plank. Yeah. 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 The National Party platform, the plank on abortion, mm -hmm. is essentially that um that we uh withdraw opinion on it. <laughs> yeah. Um I mean it essentially it says something like uh recognizing that there's a there's a real divide on this, um, and that there are good faith arguments on both sides. Yeah. Um that we just don't think that it should be in the power of government. Yeah, which I, for the most part, agree with. Yeah, um, I actually have been saying that for years and years and years without even realizing that that was actually <laughs> that the, was plank. the plank. Yeah. Um, I mean, I hadn't said it exactly like that, but yeah. uh, but you've all but heard me that's say a, it. That's a good way times. to put it, though. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, it it just it just amazes me that people can be so. Um, radical is not really the word, but extreme um, oh, maybe extreme is not really the right word but so enthusiastic so yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah about this issue yeah like and and i guess when you think about it you understand why because mm -hmm. i mean if you're if you're pro life you think that that an abortion is killing a baby and there's i mean obviously that's probably the worst thing a person could do so there's good reason to be radically against it and and to the other side of that argument, you know, if you're if you're pro-abortion, you believe it's not killing a baby, and you have to take that position pretty radical. Or, well, and, because and, if you're wrong, yeah. <laughs> but and then the position becomes um, about bodily autonomy. Yeah, yeah, uh, which we're pretty radical. Which I'm about pretty too. radical about myself. So yeah. I get enthusiastic. I mean, okay, yeah, yeah, we should use that word instead. I <laughs> yeah. feel like that word's better, safer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, and, and so I get why, but at the same time, at least for me personally, it's something that so doesn't affect my life in any way whatsoever. Yeah. And I figure for the ma vast majority of people, this is something that just doesn't affect you so directly, mm -hmm. especially like the economy, yeah. <laughs> which affects your life <laughs> extremely directly. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, they, they certainly know how to get people... Um, uh, Riled up, yeah, riled up about this. And in fact, here's um, here's Chuck Schumer talking about this this particular issue. All right. Now, Republicans have talked about their dream to overturn Roe v. Wade for a long time, but now the MAGA Republicans have taken over. If the MAGA Republicans get their way, millions of women in America would no longer have power over their own bodies and their own lives. Now. What he says there is actually one of the things that really 
really gets me about this. Yeah. Um, and, and it's something that keeps being said in some form over and over and over again, which is um, this is taking away women's ability to make their own choices about their reproductive lives, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Okay. We seem to be forgetting an important part of this. <laughs> this is which a is, symptom that has a cause. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which is how they got pregnant in the first place. Yeah. Like you made that decision. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and I understand that things can go wrong with, um, um, with birth control and so forth. By the way, if you don't know, because they don't tell you, although I think most people know at this point, yeah. like antibiotics interfere with the pill. Yeah, they do. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're taking antibiotics, just be aware. Yeah. Oh, I'm very aware <laughs> by the way. <laughs> that your pill. Well, yeah. Um, so just say it. Did, did the pill not work for you <laughs> while you were taking antibiotics? It did not, as a matter of fact. <laughs> okay, that's weird. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I understand that things can go wrong, but there were it, there was a series of decisions here. Yeah, that were made. Absolutely. You know, um, like of well, never mind. Uh, <laughs> So uh, he he continues though because he he has a, he has a quick answer for that particular um, response. All right, all right. So Let's here see it goes. <laughs> if the MAGA Republicans get their way, young girls will grow up in a world where if they become pregnant because of rape, they will have no choice but to carry their rapist's child. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Can you imagine? <laughs> Can you? <laughs> well. And you said this, I just, that's got to be such a small percentage of the abortions that are actually done. Yeah. I, I ain't yeah, saying the, that. The I'm, rape and incest thing is, uh, has always been a carve out for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that it would be one for me too. Like, I mean, I, okay. Like I can. Yeah. Like it, it seems cruel to make somebody carry their rapist child. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, sus I suspect that most. Uh, rapes that result in pregnancy are actually like um, inside of marriage or date rape kind of situations or of whatever, but um, not at, like the. At any rate, it's a. It has yeah. to be a, at least of the per, of the abortions that are actually performed. It's got to be a, a minuscule amount. Yeah, I would think so. I mean, people that are trying to get pregnant have trouble. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, like the the things that have to line up. For it to work. For a, um, a rape to result in a pregnancy yeah. is pretty significant. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you got, uh, well, the rape has to occur. Um, you got about a one in 10 chance that the uh, that the woman is receptive at the time of the rape. Mm -hmm. um, it, I mean, receptive, like ovulating uh, yeah. at the time of the rape, not <laughs> receptive <laughs> to the rape. Yeah, um, you, you got, uh, it has to take yeah. and there has to be no problems. Yeah. Yeah. And that's just that's just a, I mean not, I just not saying it. not saying it can't happen because yeah. because I'm, I'm sure I, that it does. I, I'm sure it does, but I'm just saying as far as like the grand scheme of things to yeah. make that such top of his list mm -hmm. of the and always top of the list when this subject comes up yeah. is just a problem for me. Yeah. Um I imagine that most uh I, actually I imagine that most abortions are either um first off I imagine most of them are from couples. Yeah. That are together. Yeah. Uh, and either um, like couples that are young and are not ready to have uh, children or um, people that are married and um, don't want it. And actually, probably the woman, the woman doesn't want the child in that case. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Oh, I, like, I, I haven't seen statistics on this, honestly, but um, I, I think that I think that abortion is often used as a form of birth control. Yeah. And um, I don't think that that's acceptable. Yeah. No, I would have a problem. Personally, I, yeah. I'm, I'm opposed to that. I, and like yeah. I said, I don't, I'm, I'm also opposed to government imposing that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I, I understand that my opinion is not the end-all, be-all. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, I... But you do have one. I, I do have one. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just don't... Uh, I don't like the using government to enforce my will on others. Absolutely. And I wish other people felt the same way. <laughs> <laughs> if a lot more of us felt the same way, we'd live in a lot happier place. Yeah. Just saying. Um, but Schumer has more to say, so let's let him finish. All right. 
If the MAGA Republicans get their way, pregnant women could lose their lives because there will be no exception for the life of a mother if there's a dangerous complication in the pregnancy. If MAGA Republicans get their way, women and their health care providers could go to prison for life for their medical decisions. I'm pretty sure that part's just a lie. Yeah. So I'll tell you, my when when I have this talk with my wife when we've discussed this subject, mm-hmm. like this is what bothers her, the, the last thing you just talked about. Um, and I'll tell you, I, I'm with you. I'm not, I haven't done enough digging to know one way or the other, so I, I can't speak from a position of authority here. But I'm with you that I don't think that this is as much of a thing as he's making it out to be. But it's out there big. Like this meme is going around TikTok and you're, all you're of not, the different. You're not talking about the people going to jail, though. You're talking about the um, if there's complications. That, if there's Yeah, my bad. Yeah. yeah. If there's complications, um, yeah, the, not being able to do anything about it. Yeah. Um, and, but like that's like I'll tell you, like for my wife, like that's like a sticking point for her. Yeah. And, and I get it. Like, I mean, because I, I agree. Like I, I'm right there. I yeah. agree with that. I just don't believe that it's as big of a thing as it's being made out to be Mm -hmm. uh, because it is all over social media um, that this is going or or could potentially be going on, Mm -hmm. you know, providing this um, case stands. Well, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that all of the laws uh, have a medical necessity carve out. Yeah. Um, it, it's certainly something that I always bring up and part of the reason why I don't like the idea of having laws about it because I, I'm also afraid that it could be misused to uh, prosecute people, um, prosecute doctors that are making decisions with their patient that they think yeah. are important for the lives of the patients. Yeah. Um, well, now, I'll- important for the lives of the patients does not include uh, financial distress or yeah. um, you know things like that, but... You know, I, like I remember, um, you know, talking with somebody about a a thirteen year old girl coming in pregnant. Yeah. Um, and like it could potentially be dangerous. That's for a her. dangerous situation for yeah. the thirteen year old. Yeah. yeah. Um, just because your your body's not ready for that yet. <laughs> well, and I'll tell you, if if you have a miscarriage, mm-hmm. like a legit miscarriage, yeah, the procedure they have after the miscarriage is considered an abortion. Yeah. At least in the most, as far as the documents you fill out and, mm-hmm. and have to sign and stuff to have that procedure done. Yeah. It's classified as an abortion. Yeah. Removing the already dead fetus. Exactly. Yeah. Um, um, how about uh, cases with like uh, severe um, developmental uh, issues? Yeah. Um, my mom was telling me that uh, when she was working in the hospital, um, she visited a, a woman who had just had a baby. Um, and was like, oh, you know, congratulations on your baby. And the okay, and we prove once again that the battery indicator on my recorder <laughs> sucks. Needs to give you more indication. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So I think it cut off in during the story. So yeah, mom uh, congratulated the lady on having her baby, and the woman just cried and said, "My baby's going to die." And so it it turned out that the um the baby was born without a skull structure yeah. and only survived a couple of days. And so, you know, are, are you okay with abortions in the case of like this, these kind of severe developmental um, issues? Yeah. And in, in situations like that, I really think the, the thing you're trying to weigh there is, you know, is it, is it more merciful to go on and have the abortion and not have the baby suffer? Like that's really kind of what the question you would be asking. And I do think that that would be, that's, I mean, I think it should be up to the family. Yeah. Like, I mean, cause maybe the family does think it's the right thing to do. And if mm-hmm. so that's their prerogative. Right. But I, I don't think that it's wrong to be on the other side of that argument mm-hmm. in that situation. Yeah. Well, and that's why, like, there's a whole lot of nuance and, and, um, gray area in this. And that's why I think it's important that the decision be made at the medical level, not at the political level. Yeah. Which, speaking of that, 
um, anybody who listened to this clip had to hear the same thing I did that the he keeps using the the MAGA term like the MAGA term keeps coming up and coming up and that that just tells you everything you need to know I mean we broke down some of the substance of what he had to say here but this is all political like, yeah and he would if he wouldn't use that type of language if it wasn't yeah like I mean I would honestly have more respect for him if he didn't use that type of language because mm-hmm. it's intentionally um, divisive. Yeah. Well, and it, it's like Anna Kasparian was yelling about on the Young Turks. Like, they don't care about you. No. Um, this is purely a, a, a... It is purely a divisive political issue because it inflames passions in people. Um, and the the reason that this is such a, a political issue is not because they care about the health of the woman or uh, women's rights to choose or any of that stuff. It's about um, getting people worked up and out there, but they don't care about yeah. you. They care about your vote. Absolutely. And that's, that's all this is. Yeah. So, um, going from one baby issue to another, uh, you had the formula shortage, um, thing. Yeah. So, um, I'm sure most people's heard now. So there's a, a very serious formula shortage going on. And, um, I mean, I've, I've talked to some people, friends and people I know um, personally that this is they've had issues with this is this has touched them personally because they've got young children and stuff that that need this stuff and um, and it's a real problem Mm -hmm. and I was actually talking with a friend the other day and um, and he brought this to my attention and then I've done a little digging since so the government's planning on getting involved to fix this issue which Anybody that's listening to this podcast should have the same response I had when he brought this up. was like, this is a problem. Like, there's yeah. more reason to be concerned now than there was before. Yeah. Because anytime the government gets involved, they're not going to help the situation. Like, mm-hmm. it's not going to get better now. Yeah, they're just going to create a new set of problems. And yeah. um, I heard on uh, the No Agenda show, they were talking about this issue. And um, from... Uh, you know, their various informants from all over the place. They said this isn't an issue in Europe. Yeah. Well, I, and I've heard that too, actually, that mm-hmm. uh, that this is, well, it's localized as far as in the U.S., and it's mm-hmm. actually more localized than that because some areas have had a, more of a problem with this than others. Yeah. Um, so and I don't know exactly how that works exactly, but it, it is more of a, um, there are parts of the country that have been dealing with this for a while, and it's really just touched us here in Alabama within the past, I'd say, month. Yeah. Uh, maybe less than that. Like, a couple of weeks is when it really started becoming a, a real problem. Well, um, this is this is one of those issues where if people had a better economic education, they would know where to, to put the blame. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're right in being afraid of when the government gets involved. Uh, because it's government involvement that probably caused this in the first place. Yeah. Um, the the free market, like a real free market, there is no shortage. There's scarcity. Scarcity is a rule of the market. Yeah. Um, but uh, but there's no shortages because um, the you know supply demand curves um, and the and the prices uh, help shift. Funny you should mention prices because uh, <laughs> on the list of things that that Biden wants to do is well, the one that so he had a list of well things. Let, let me finish the statement then. all right um, yeah. the you know the supply demand uh, setting prices um, shifts resources into the places where they're most needed yeah yeah absolutely mm-hmm. and so one of the things he had a list of things he wanted to do but the one that stood out to me the most is he wants to to get a board together to start investigating price gouging. And I immediately, when I heard that, I was like, man, like, and here we go. <laughs> like, that's that's how the problems start. Because to the point you're making, um, like, price gouging shouldn't be a thing. Yeah. Like, that's... It doesn't really exist. It's it, a made-up term. It's a, Yeah, it's it's a... It's a reaction to the market. Mm-hmm. And, and it's the best... It's a market reaction. It's a market reaction, yeah. yeah. And, it, and it exists to, to rein in... Um, Hoarding. Hoarding and things mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because, I mean, if you're going to overpay for something, you're less likely to hoard it than you are if it's re- if it's artificially held at a price that it shouldn't be mm-hmm. at. Well, and, and here's the other thing about, uh, about the free market. 
generally anyway, is that all transactions are voluntary. Yeah. Right? Like you may need something, like after a hurricane, you may need water yeah. and be paying $8 a, a, um, a liter for it or something like that. That sounds obscene. Yeah. But at the time that you made that purchase, first off, you could have prepared for it. Yeah. Secondly, yeah. Um, at the time that you made that purchase, um, that liter of water was more valuable to you than the $8. Exactly. Or you wouldn't have made the purchase. Exactly. And so all of these things are voluntary and you may be feel like you're being taken advantage of. But as we talk about in hurricanes, um, when uh, water is $8 a liter right in a place where a, a hurricane just came through, um, and instead of being $3 a liter, yeah. a lot more liters of water get shipped to a place where they can sell them for eight. Exactly. And, and the market fixes or reacts. Yeah. yeah. It incentivizes people to, hey, I, you know can mm -hmm. make a little money helping some people out by taking some this product over here. Yeah. Where if, if you have the government step in and be like, no, 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 you can bring that water over here, but you still have to sell it for $3. Well, yeah. you're losing money now. Yeah. Because, it, well, I mean, you're not going to, if you're, you yeah. don't stand Why to, shift uh, resources into a place? Like, yeah. it, it costs money to do that too. Exactly. Um, and so there's no, there's no incentive whatsoever then for you to bring more of the product into the place where it's needed most. You may as well just maintain your shipments as they were. Exactly. At least as far as, I mean, the right mm -hmm. thing to do is to send it over there, but at the same, but the market doesn't always react to the mm -hmm. right thing to do. Yeah. But and it's then, not the business responsibility to do that anyway. Well, and, I mean, uh, people can do that. Yeah, like, and, hey, and you, you live do. in, and exactly. People yeah. live in an area where water's still cheap. They buy it and they drive it down to wherever it and is. And just give that, it away. Yeah. And that's great. And yeah. I'm, all, I'm all for that. Yeah. But in, in a disaster situation, wouldn't you want every resource to be, and, and every opportunity for that resource to be brought in, um, even the people who aren't necessarily doing it for all the perfect reasons? You know, I mean, there's, it's still the, the stuff is still getting to where it needs to go. Yeah. The, the truth is that the profit motive um, is a motivation to satisfy people. Yeah, absolutely. Like you want to provide something that, that people are going to want and are going to buy and are willing to pay top dollar for. Yeah. That, that's the, that's what the profit motive is, is an incentive to do what the best thing for the consumer. Exactly. So. Because if you yeah if you can't satisfy the consumer then you're not making any profit yeah right then why um, bother <laughs> yeah um, so and the the concern is that this is another one of those situations where people think that the government has the answers and and you well, keep hearing over and over again like oh well, so th this is something that I've been talking with people about recently um, is that especially the generation behind us. Like you're you're almost an Xer. We'll we'll count we'll count you. <laughs> well, um, I'll take it because I like that better than the alternative. <laughs> um, and uh, you know, but the millennials and the Zoomers particularly yeah. um, have been really like inundated uh, with this idea. Okay, so younger people are are more pro communism or socialism. Yeah. Uh, just generally. Um, now there's some other good re like I was too when I was young. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm a recovered Marxist. I like I, you, <laughs> you know, went I, down I, that path. Right? I, I did. I mean, it seemed it seems so idealistic, yeah. um, and and it is idealistic. The problem is that people aren't generally like people are out for themselves. You know, you, yeah, I I did explain then that it was something that would take a culture shift. Yeah. Um, at, at this point, I realized that it's a culture shift that would never occur because people are self-interested. Yeah. And there's nothing that you'll ever be able to do about that. Yeah. Not that they can't be altruistic, but... Yeah. Um, but overall, like, yeah. you have, you really have to kind of go to mob think mm -hmm. like, and how the mob is going to react in, in any situation, but like, especially political ones like this. Yeah. Um, and they're never going to all be what it would take to be for the communism to work. Yeah. It has to be on a very small scale where everybody knows everybody and can keep everybody else in line. Yeah. That's really what it comes down to. Yeah. Um, it, on a large scale, it just can't work. I mean, it has worked on a small scale on like really small scale cultures, like, yeah. you know, hunter gatherer type, yeah. you know, foraging cultures, um, where it's, you know, you're, you're talking about 40 to a hundred people, in yeah. a population that all know each other and and are all contributing to towards yeah. the greater good. Yeah, and are all interdependent. Yeah, that's, that's kind of the, the important thing. part, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, but 
uh, uh, you know, Scott Horton has been saying recently, like you can understand why people would be uh, pro communism. The younger people could be pro communism because they've been propagandized their whole lives, essentially to to believe that this, like the kind of situation that we're in now, is the result of the free market. Yeah, that this is the result of capitalism. Yeah. Um, As if we've had capitalism this whole yeah. time. <laughs> well, it has been capitalism, but it hasn't been the free market. Yeah. Um, and, you know, not being trained to recognize all of the interferences that the government has has um, placed on the free market and uh, and the distortions that they've created through their various actions, through monetary policy, th- through the Fed and so forth. Um that have made this not a free market. Yeah. Um, that this is not the end result of capitalism, that this is the end result of government uh, control of the market or government interference in the market. Um, but if you, uh, as a young person, like were growing up in your parents' house that they paid $120,000 for, and now that house uh, is costs four hundred thousand dollars and you've gone off to college and gone into debt and we don't even need to discuss that particular issue right now yeah. but um you know gone into debt for uh, college and you you know you've got a degree that you can get into a professional job and now you come home but you realize that with your job you could never afford your parents house yeah yeah um that uh you know it starts to it's Communism, like the government should buy it for people and just give it away it starts to sound pretty good <laughs> yeah right yeah. Exactly. But the problem is that it's not – this isn't the result of capitalism. The, like the market would fix this. Yeah. Um, the problem is that the government has too much of an influence on the market. And one thing I would like to say, just going back to that whole going to college thing, like that's also something that is heavily, heavily pushed that, mm-hmm. that, that you're doing by – and I know because, I mean, I, I grew up. I was a teenager once too. Like – Going to college is the right thing to do. Like that's how you're taught yeah. throughout life. Is that's that's what you do. You go, you, you graduate, you go to college, you graduate, and you get a job, and you buy a house. Mm-hmm. Like that's supposed to be the order of things. And there's a whole generation of kids that have went out and done that, and now they're sitting here looking like, well, I did, I graduated, I went to college, now I can't find a job in the field I'm in. And I can't afford anything because prices of everything, particularly houses, are mm-hmm. through the roof. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, yeah. you get to the end of that situation and you're like, yeah, like, I did everything I was supposed to do and things aren't working for me. Mm-hmm. There's something wrong with the system. Right. And, and then, they're not necessarily wrong. Yeah, they're, they're right. There is something wrong <laughs> with the They just have system. the wrong fix. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's not the economic system. It's not, it's not free market capitalism that's the problem. Yeah. It's... Fascism, that's the problem, <laughs> that's the which problem. is where we are. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, they, they talk about inflation being transitory, which is a joke from the very beginning. Mm-hmm. And something that I keep trying to remind people is that in the 1950s, yeah. a blue-collar worker could support a family of four with a house and a TV and a car and, like, all of those things. Oh, yeah. With his income. Yeah. Or her income, but generally yeah. his. But generally his. I mean, that was yeah. the standard back then. Yeah. You know. Now, professionals need two incomes to support that. Yeah. Um, and, and we have more things now, but most of those things are relatively cheaper. Yeah. Um, except for the, the house, because yeah. the government's deeply involved in the housing market. Yeah. Um, but your TV's a lot cheaper, and yeah, it's it a lot better. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, your phone, cheaper and better. Yeah. Um, but it, like... Everything you're also contributing a whole lot more to the government than he, you did back then. Um, <laughs> That's one and factor. The the government debt was a a whole lot less yeah. than than it is now. A, well, a tr- yeah, I can't even explain how much less it was. Um, hell, at the beginning of uh, Bush's presidency, it was only like a couple of trillion dollars. Yeah, it was it was small. Yeah. Yeah. Um, at the end of this is W. Um, yeah. At the end of W. Bush's presidency, it was like eight. Yeah. Um, and at the end of uh, Obama's presidency, it was like uh, 15 or something I like say that. It was like 16. Like, I want to yeah, say it was doubled. There. Yeah. 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 Um, and at the end of uh, Trump's four years, <laughs> right? it was almost 30. Yeah. And it's well over 30 now. Yeah. And, and, you know, the worst part about it is that uh, they got out there and, and said um, that they reduced the deficit by a trillion dollars this year with the budget. Yeah. Yeah, but you increased the deficit by three trillion dollars last year, so you're still two trillion dollars in the hole from yeah. where we were before, which was already a deficit. <laughs> yeah, all right. Like you're not improving things, actually. Well, and that's that's the scary thing 
and the scary situation as far as what we're what we're dealing with here because mm-hmm. the inflation is out of control. Um, the only way they can rein in the inflation is through raising the the rates. Um, and we've already seen with the little tiny interest rates. Interest rates, yeah. yeah. The only and we've already seen what will happen when they raise the rates. I mean, they raised them a half a percent this week, and the markets went absolutely nuts. Um, so what's gonna what's gonna happen if they actually decide to raise these rates to to where they need to be to fix the inflation? I mean, we'll, we'll see a collapse. Uh, but the other end of that that you have to remember too is so if they they the, won't do it either because it's a political loser they can't well and they can't because even beyond it being a political loser which you're right it is um, if they raise the rates too much you know we've got as a country we've got all of this debt mm-hmm. and they can't afford the more they raise those rates the more the payments are on that. That yeah. debt that we own as a country. Yeah, I mean, if the, you hit a point where, because what they did in the seventies was they raised the rates to something like twenty percent. Yeah, um, to to unwind the inflation of the seventies. Um, and if we did that now, we the country itself would go kaputs. Like, I mean, we would have to default. Yeah, I mean, we wouldn't have a choice. Yeah. And then the dollar is probably no longer the reserve currency, and so yeah. then the value of the dollar falls. Which would also be a problem because all of this is built upon the fact that we're the reserve currency anyway. Like, mm-hmm. we couldn't do what we're doing if we weren't the reserve currency. Right. Like, all of this is coming to an end at some point, and I'm mm-hmm. not saying it's coming soon, but I'm just saying it ain't looking good. <laughs> no. Well, I don't see a way out at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't think that the that the U.S. government can do the things that they need to do um, to prevent a total economic collapse. I don't. Yeah. Th- I, I mean, I think that they're capable, which is really to to get hands off, yeah. um, to go back to hard currency, like yeah. real money. Yeah. Um. And and maybe you know it's worth like discussing right here again what money really is. Yeah. Um. Money is just a medium of exchange. Uh, it, it, money is something that everybody kind of agrees on the general value of. Yeah. Um, and you can use it uh, to, um, to more, to facilitate exchanges better than a barter system. Yeah. Right. So you take something that you know that you can get rid of to somebody else at a particular value or close to a particular value. Like that's what money really is. Yeah. And it needs to be pinned to something. Yeah. Which is one of my concerns about Bitcoin, as an example, yeah. right? Like I always talk about that Bitcoin's not real money because it's not really pinned to anything, and just being rare does not make something valuable in and of itself. Yeah, because there's plenty of rare things that nobody wants. Because that's that's the claim that well, another example that that's the claim the fame for Bitcoin is that you know there is a finite amount of it. Mm-hmm. Um, they can't produce any more of it, or at least minuscule amounts at this point. Yeah. Um, but it has a limit. It has a limit. But the the other thing that that goes that's kind of like what you're talking about is those NTFs mm-hmm. that are out there. The little like that's a prime example of yeah. There when you when you buy one of those, it's the only one of them. But if nobody else wants it, yeah, then, then it has no value. Then it has no value. And there's been a I've seen a lot of stories this week about people who's paid millions of dollars for these things mm-hmm. and they're worthless when they try to get rid of them. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's other places that Bitcoin fails too, because one of the things that money should be is stable. Yeah. Well, Bitcoin is not. Yeah. And it's, Um, yeah, proven over time. And I do think that, I mean, Bitcoin has always came back. And I think that this situation we're in now is no different. Like, mm -hmm. I think that Bitcoin will come back, but it absolutely fluctuates with the markets. Yeah. Um, And you can't really dispute that at this point. And, who knows what it's going to do when the market actually crashes? Like, mm-hmm. I mean, I'd like to think that it would still be a safe place for your money, yeah. but there's no guarantees on that. Um, and the and I mean, we kind of, I think we kind of agree that a crash at some point is coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I don't think it's that far away. Yeah. Um, but I've been saying that for a while. So yeah. Um, you know, and the other, so I was standing in line at a restaurant today, and um, they, uh, the couple in front of me wanted a chocolate shake. Yeah. That's what it was. They wanted a chocolate shake. I bet they and, didn't get it. And they didn't get it um, <laughs> because uh, the they didn't have chocolate. Yeah. There's right? always you an had, excuse. I yeah. just want to say this because you're fixing to get me on the soapbox here. But anytime <laughs> I go to an ice cream shop, I always like to order a chocolate shake. It's my favorite thing. I love it. Mm-hmm. But I never get it. Rarely. 
Yeah. Rarely do I get it. There's always an excuse. And the reason is, and I've learned this over time, is it takes time to make that. And if there's a <laughs> bunch of people waiting in line, there's always an excuse why they can't do it. Yeah. Well, in this case, they offered vanilla or strawberry. Okay. Um, but uh, chocolate, they didn't have They didn't have chocolate syrup or something. Okay. All right. And so um, <laughs> when... And I, I'm... <laughs> I'm pretty sure that they were the couple was making fun of the whole situation because when the guy, the um, counter attendant or whatever, walked away, they were like, "Well, I guess that's Putin's fault," <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or, or something along that line. Um, but uh, you know, like you have to understand where inflation comes from, and that's the you know the other thing that's going on here. I was talking with my mom's neighbor earlier today. Um, and he was saying, you know, he could sell his property for an awful lot of money. Oh yeah. But, um, that, you know, what, what do you do? What, what's the money worth anyway? He's like, you know, this sounds like, oh, you know, great. I could sell the property for a a million and a half or whatever. But when a a burger that used to cost a dollar is $6, that million and a half doesn't really seem like a lot of money anymore. And, um, and so the inflation, it doesn't come from Putin. No. Um, it, it doesn't, it doesn't even really come from Biden, although he's pretty easy to blame. He's easy, yeah. Um, it, it comes from the federal reserve and, and the government generally just printing up a whole bunch of money to, to, yeah. uh, handle its financial issues. Yeah. Um, and the worst thing about it is that like you keep talking about, uh, and this is one of those weird ironies that I love is that, um, you know, they say that, uh, because of the free market, because of free market capitalism, the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer, and there's a, a bigger gap, bigger wealth gap than ever before. But for decades and decades, they have limited the free market. They have done all kinds oh, of yeah. things to try and rein in free market capitalism, and that somehow, miraculously, I guess, yeah. um, this wealth gap keeps getting bigger and bigger. But yeah. they're actually the cause of their own problem. Oh, yeah. Um, because printing this money, uh, the first places that it goes is to the banks. Yeah. And so it's the people that have the money that get the money, the newly printed money first. Yeah. And when they get that money, it's still worth the what it was value. worth yeah when yeah. when it was printed yeah. um by the time it trickles down to us poor schlubs it's not worth as much anymore inflation's already kicked in by the time it gets to us yep. so the people that get the money first get the full value out of it and then when it gets down to the rest of us it's not worth as much anymore mm-hmm. um and the of course the reason is because like even if you if you don't have your money pinned to a, a commodity like gold or silver or even oil or whatever yeah. Yeah. um that uh that has value of its own, um, that, uh, you could say that the, the, okay, you could increase the money supply in this country without triggering inflation if it increased at the same rate as production. Yeah. Like you could, you could pin it to the U S production. Like the GDP or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not really. Cause that's really done in dollars also. Is so it? you're, you're, okay. you're, you're talking about, um, and it, so what would an, you an pin increase it to? in output? Okay. Right. Because businesses over time, um, you know, develop innovations and new products and so forth. And so over time, the ability to put out more product just grows. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, so you could increase the dollars in line with the amount of excess product that's well, being produced. Well, and that's the argument I've always heard for why we should, why we did the right thing, which I haven't heard this argument a lot. So mm-hmm. don't take me. But um, the argument I've heard before, though, is that the reason we needed to come off of the gold standard is because of just that. Because as the economy grows, you're limited by the money supply of not being able to be increased. Mm. No, um, it, it, it doesn't create a limitation in and of itself because uh, then you have deflation, which yeah. sounds bad. Yeah. But for a consumer, it's fantastic. Well, it just yeah. means that you can buy more with your money. It's yeah. bad for businesses. It's bad for banks. And that's why we don't do it. That's why we try and create more inflation is because it's good for the people that have the money to contribute to It's good for the people at the top. Campaigns. Ah, oh, well, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, so it doesn't... it and. And if you keep inflation low enough, it doesn't affect us down here enough for us to complain about. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of a mystery where it comes from, but where it comes from is actually all this money printing. Yeah. Um, and because if you increase the the money supply, it's just like, then it becomes like any other commodity. Whereas if you have a whole lot more of it in the market, yeah. it's just worth less. Yeah, Absolutely. 
I mean, mm-hmm. money doesn't generally stick to like market controls in the same way that other commodities, commodities do. do. Yeah. But um, but in this case, it it applies yeah. uh, that if you increase the supply, um, then the va- the price goes down. Yeah. 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 Um, and they have increased the supply by tremendous numbers. Yeah. Since uh, COVID alone. Yeah. And 2008 in particular, they like oh, tripled yeah. the money supply over the next few years. Well, and I've, I've been telling people for a while now, like this is a story I've seen before. I remember mm-hmm. pretty well what was going on in 08, mm-hmm. um, 07, 08, and kind of into 09 too, like the environment that we were in during that time. And like all of the same stuff happened, like the, the prices went up. It wasn't to this level, yeah. but there was inflation during mm-hmm. that time. And there was something else, I think they call it shrinkflation. Yeah. Where the products get smaller. <laughs> yeah, products get smaller and the prices, prices still go. Prices go up, yeah. yeah. Um, and there was a lot of that. And I, I personally, um, and I work in retail, so I have a little bit of standing here, but um, I haven't seen as much of the shrinkflation this go-round as I did in 08. Like, mm-hmm. I remember very specifically in 08, items getting smaller and yeah. the prices well, going Well, I can up. just say that a bag of chips, even though the bag stays the same size, oh, yeah, yeah. is not necessarily the same weight, weight anymore. Yeah, no, that's uh, true. Because they fill it full of nitrogen or whatever anyway. Yeah. Um, to, to keep it from getting crushed. Right? There you go. That's, that's, the, that's, that's the, yeah. Uh, it's the official reason, I believe. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I, I think we, we run long because we, don't have any idea how long we've been talking because of the stupid recorder cutting out. Oh yeah. But um, I'm guessing based on my uh, the times that I wrote down for the original clips yeah. that that we're pushing it <laughs> at this point. So um, just really quickly, while in this particular economy where prices keep going up because they keep printing more money and that they're spending more money than they have um, or can bring in. Yeah. Um, and of course they keep. You know, I just I just sold a property, so uh, they're gonna take their piece of that, oh, yeah. um, and, which is really irritating because, of course, I bought the property with already taxed money. <laughs> yeah, <all> right. <laughs> so I'm getting taxed again. Yep. Um, anyway, <laughs> taxes, uh, and this and this is why I've been thinking about this a lot. Actually, it's like, what do I do with my money? Because yeah. um, now I, I do, you know, after the payoff uh, for my loan and and, and everything. Um, I got a, I got a healthy check. Yeah. Um, and I got to figure out what to do with it. Now, what I want to do with it is buy more property, but now is not the time to buy more property. Would not recommend that. (laughs) Way overvalued right now. And I'm convinced that within the next couple of years, property values are going to tank. Well, maybe not tank, but definitely go down. Yeah. Um, I I don't think the property is going to. When the crash comes, the property values are going to be nice. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I, I don't think that property will deflate at the same rate that like the stock market will. Yeah. But, um. Well, it did but, in 08. <laughs> yeah, but the, the bubble was in property in 08. Yeah, and the, I that don't think that the bubble is in property I now. I don't think that it's in property, but... I, I think it's mostly bonds, actually. But Yeah, well, it is bonds. Um, And, and that's a market I wouldn't want to be in. No, either. no, no, no. <laughs> but, and, and unfortunately... Too, because it's it's yeah. it's traditionally a safe, a safe invest- investment, but, but it's not right now. Yeah. Um, so the question is, what do I do with my money to try and maintain the value of it? Because yeah. paper money isn't worth anything. I mean, no. it's gonna paper money. The value is gonna continue to go down if the government continues to react the way they do. And I don't There's think they no have any other plan. to believe that 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 it won't. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. So what do I do with my money in the meantime so that I can try and maintain the value of it until the property values, property prices go down yeah. um, and I can buy more property again. Yeah. And so that's why I've been thinking about this. And, wow. and I'm, I'm thinking gold, uh, real estate investments, yeah. um, and then I'm going to put a smaller percentage into crypto, I think. Yeah. I think crypto is not a bad play. Um, I wouldn't go too heavy with it. I, smaller percentage yeah. into crypto. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, and I agree with that. I think you should have some exposure there, but not, yeah. not a lot. Man, don't discount guns and ammo, man. <laughs> that's, <I've> what, got, <laughs> that's what I say. I recently acquired a whole bunch of new guns. Hey, not a pot, not a bad thing. Man. No, no, it's they, true. They will they will only go up in value. I need a 10 millimeter because we got lots and lots of 10 millimeter <laughs> ammo and, lots and, lots of 10 and no 10 millimeter pistols. Yeah. Anyway, um, so, you know, at the same time that all this is happening, though, uh, the U.S. just uh, voted, the U.S. Congress just voted to provide another $40 billion 
um, in aid to of Ukraine. Counterfeited money to of, Ukraine. Yeah, of counterfeited <laughs> money to Ukraine. Yeah. Because the only, I mean, they don't have it. The yeah. only thing they can do is print it. Exactly. Um, and of course, this is all a, a corporate welfare racket anyway. Yeah. Um, read uh, Smedley Butler's uh, War is a Racket. It's like, it hasn't changed. Oh, yeah. It's I mean, same. that yeah. was written in like the 1930s, I think, but it hasn't changed. Yeah. Um, and so all, all that's really going on. And of course, uh, Ron Paul keeps talking about the Raytheon um, investor call. Uh, yeah. where the CEO said, uh, you know, we expect a good bump in our business from this, um, that all of this uh, all of this equipment that's been going to Ukraine has been coming out of people's stockpiles, yeah. uh, government stockpiles, and that they'll be happy to replenish those stockpiles and they should see a nice um, increase in their business because of that. And he's not wrong. Yep. I mean, he's right. So this is another way of privatizing public funds. This is the most common way of privatizing yeah. public funds, um, where they steal money from us, the taxpayer, and then they use it to pay private corporations to purchase weaponry to send to somebody else. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, another $40 billion goes to Ukraine. That means it makes a total of $53 billion this year. In 2022, Man. $53 billion that we've sent to Ukraine in 2022. Now, just for reference, the the estimated entire defense budget for Russia yeah. in 2021 was $66 billion. Wow. So, so, so less than halfway through the year, we have almost say. given as much to Ukraine as the entire defense budget for Russia. For a war that they will lose. Yeah, yeah and they'll still lose. Yeah, exactly. Like, so, I mean... Yeah, that, that's insanity. But that's not what it's about. That's not what it's about. And so here's a clip from uh, Lloyd Austin, who is our Secretary of Defense, All right. um, telling us what it's really about. Okay, I'm excited to hear. All right. Uh, we want to see Russia weakened to the degree that it can't do the kinds of things that it has done in invading Ukraine. And the U.S. wants to help Ukraine win. We believe that they, we can win, they can win if they have the right equipment, the right support. We so, want to see Russia weaken to the point that they can't invade anybody else. That's what this is really about. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, well, I just, I just love at the end where he says that he believes that they can win. Well, he says that we can win, that they can win, that, we, that they can win. Yeah. Or something like yeah. that. He, he gets confused <laughs> about who's fighting this war. Yeah, well, and, and he should be because the only way Ukraine is winning is if we go over there. Well, that's true, too. Like, I mean, that's, I mean, because they can win this war mm -hmm. if we go over there and fight it for them. Um, but like, that's not an outcome that any of us want to see. <laughs> like that's, that's a scary. Yeah. Well, um, according to some, uh, like Seth Moulton from, uh, Massachusetts, we are already fighting this war. You want to hear that well, clip? Let's play it because it, by the way, I hadn't heard the clip yet, but I would, I tend to agree with him. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. All right, here we go. All right, let's hear it. Look, I'm going to support it because it's the right thing to do for Ukraine. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of politics involved, and there will be domestic debates here at home about other policies and whatnot. But at the end of the day, we've got to realize we're at war. And we're not just at war to support the Ukrainians. We're fundamentally uh, at war, although it's somewhat through a proxy, with Russia. And it's important that we win. Well, that wasn't exactly what I was getting at. But he's not wrong either. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, what I was getting at is the fact that we're as involved as we are we're part of this war. Oh, yeah. Like, you can't... Do well, that's what he said. That's basically what he said. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, that's... Uh, you know, this is one of those quiet part out loud things. I guess they don't yeah. feel any any compulsion to, like, hide the, well, the truth of this anymore. Well, and there's no reason, because it's not like the Russians don't see it this way. No, no. I mean, they understand what's going on here. Um, yeah. Uh, well, and um, just as a side note, I did uh, write the letter, or... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. About... To you know, to go to senators and congressmen and whatever about ending the war, yeah, um, or ending our involvement, involvement in the war yeah. in Ukraine. Um, I'm sure that there's a way that I can put a word document up on our website for people to download. I don't, I've never done that before, so I don't actually know how. We'll yeah. Figure it out. Yeah, I mean, I could Soon. share it to the Facebook page, right? I don't think so. Can you put a word document I have in no clue. it? I don't think that I've you never can share tried. it to a page either. <laughs> really? I think I think the only way that I found earlier to share it because I was asked to do it by the Baldwin County Libertarian Party, yeah. um, I I was able to drop it onto the uh, the private chat. The private chat, yeah. Um, but you can't drop documents. Uh, you know, I've never seen documents in Facebook. Yeah, I so don't think that you can. You may be right. 
Um, and I, like I said, I'm sure that I can do it through our website at thelibertymike.com, but I don't know. I, I don't know how at this point. Got to learn. But it's just WordPress. So if anybody, <laughs> if anybody knows how to do that, like contact me, Michael at the Liberty Mike. Yeah. Um, and uh, and we can get that up there. It's good too. Yeah, I I, I read it. I, it was yeah. very solid. Um, and so all you got to do is you know you could download the Word document and personalize it and yeah. send it. Absolutely, just as is. Yeah. Um. Anyway, yeah. Uh, it's there's no doubt at this point that we're fighting a war with Russia. Why? Yeah. I still don't understand because they're a rival. Yeah. Uh, because <laughs> there there are people in the U S government that have been there for a long time that probably still have cold war, you know, feelings about Russia. Um, and just to remind people, the problem that we had, um, was with the Soviet union. It was with the communist Soviet republics. Yeah. The Russia that exists today is the people that overthrew (laughs) The that, communist Soviet that regime. Yeah, absolutely. So it, it doesn't make any sense for anyway. Um, the why would we? There are people that are concerned that really believe that we cannot allow a rival to U.S. power to ever arise. Yeah. Well, it's it's the empire mentality. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you if you truly believe that we're a force for good in the world and that that without that everything goes to pot then yeah i mean russia's a threat to that i mean not really but i mean i could see how it was perceived that way i mean yeah. that they want to be the dominant power in their neck of the woods mm-hmm. yeah i mean that's a threat to us being the dominant power in their in threat. their neck of the woods yeah exactly yeah and so in that respect yeah they're a threat to us you mm-hmm. know but th- that's the only realm where that's the case you yeah. know and and I don't understand how you can argue that us not l- allowing them to be a strong power in their neck of the woods is is not dangerous. Like mm-hmm. I, I just I, how like is creates makes a more dangerous world them being powerful in their neck of the woods creates a more dangerous world than us just dominating over yeah. a nuclear power. Well, yeah, and, th- and that's really what it is. Is it's not um, you know the question is is it more dangerous for us to allow Russia to be a dominant power in their region or for us to be antagonistic with them. Yeah. And I, I think that it's pretty clear that it's more dangerous for us to be antagonistic with them. Absolutely. Like if you had if you had peaceful relations with Russia and Russia was dominant in their region, yeah. is that safer than than fighting with Russia, yeah, <laughs> it's absolutely safer. <laughs> and the thing, what's so irritating is, is if you look back over the past twenty years, there was every opportunity for us to have created that world mm-hmm. where you know Russia was dominant in their neck of the woods. Mm-hmm. But well, we were, it, it but took we were, some time before they even got to that before point where they, they could, could be, be dominant. Well, they could have okay. done that, but yeah. by now they could have done that. Yeah, and um, and we could have had peace with them. Mm-hmm. Like there was every opportunity in the early 2000s for that to have became the process. Yeah. You know, but that's just not the path we chose. Yeah. Um, and now we're stuck with what is we're flirting with nuclear war. Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, uh, we're we have continuously gone abroad in search of monsters to destroy as uh, uh, John Adams, Quincy Adams, I believe, actually yeah. um, advised against. Yeah. And. Yeah. You know, we could have been that shining beacon on the hill, I think was his phrase also. Yeah. Um, and instead, uh, you know, la- actually, I wish I'd pulled this clip now. Um, no Agenda played a clip from Lavrov, uh, Sergei Lavrov, uh, who we haven't talked to in two months, by the way, yeah. um, and should have been. This is the Russian foreign minister, yeah. uh, where he was saying if um, if Russia's uh, uh, altercation with Ukraine makes you uncomfortable... Well, maybe you can imagine it was in Africa or the Middle East or um, uh, Israel over Palestine or yeah. <laughs> like he yeah. made a bunch of comparisons of stuff that the U.S. is involved in as the yeah. as the aggressor and said, well, you know, if it makes you uncomfortable that we're doing this, pretend it's them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and he's not wrong about that, making that comparison. Yeah. I mean, I hate to give the guy any credit, but you know. Oh, I don't. I really like Lavrov, actually. Really? I, think I, I don't know like, that much about him. But. I think that he's clever and uh, shrewd. And um, yeah. I, I think that he, I actually, I think that he is a good 
like a really good foreign minister. He really? knows how to put pressure where he should put pressure and to uh, be light where he should be light. I, I think that yeah. he's, um, I have a lot of respect for him. He's been, he's been an excellent statement statesman for his entire career. Yeah. Well, cool. So, I don't know that much about him. So yeah. I do, re- I do recognize the name. Yeah. Um, one thing I'd like to say, just kind of going out, um, the, um, and I, we mentioned this throughout the podcast, but I just feel like it needs, it bears mentioning again mm-hmm. is that so that we, we talked a lot about the economy and, and how doom and gloom things are. Um, my biggest fear here is that what we just talked about as far as the war goes, that is the one thing that can politically fix this for the politicians mm-hmm. is going to war. Um, and I just, I really do worry that that's the road, that's going to be the out that they take. Yeah. When 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 things really get serious as far as the economy goes, that that's going to be the pivot and the shift. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's the only answer in an empire anyway is to continue, ex- continually expand. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, that's what, that's what the Romans taught us, that there yeah. comes a point where the only way to uh, maintain, maintain yeah. is to continue to expand. Yeah. Well, aggressively. And, yeah, which is what we're doing to the T. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's it's something to to watch out for and to not be fooled by when it happens mm-hmm. because and it is hard because I mean, I remember in the early 2000s when we went to war, mm-hmm. like everybody wants to rally behind their country. And and it if the war's just, I don't have a problem with that, but I, do you think that the next war will be just? Yeah. Nobody's invading us. Exactly, exactly. Um, and uh, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, and it is certainly the the most frightening frightening outcome of all of this. And it is hard to fight against that rally around the flag. And they have the U.S. government has a much tighter hold on mainstream information than they did in. The early 2000s. Oh, yeah, they do. And I didn't even consider that, but you're absolutely right. Mm-hmm. Um, just something to be aware of and be watchful for. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, guys. I love my country. Mm-hmm. Like, and that's the reason we do this podcast yeah. is because I love my country. I just hate my government. <laughs> well, that's a great place to end. Um, all right. Well, so uh, See next week. Next week we're still good because the week after that is the Libertarian Convention. Oh wow! So yeah, you'll be gone. Yeah. Um. So, but next week, uh, we should be back without any any trouble. Cool. Um. I think softball's over too now, right? It is. So yep. we we should have Thursday. Thursday we yes yeah Thursday okay. as far as I know should be good. Well, hopefully through the summer at least we'll be um back to the Thursday. Uh, podcasts. Absolutely. Next and if not Thursday, then maybe Friday. And yeah. if not Friday, then maybe <laughs> then Saturday. For sure Saturday, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, next week's a little dicey because my oldest graduates. So, mm. um, but we should, we'll be able to get yeah, out of the Yeah, but she graduates on Monday. Yeah, but the whole week, it's a whole week of festivities, man. Okay. <laughs> so, but yeah, we should be good for Thursday as far as I know. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, and congratulations, Callie. Absolutely. Uh, I'll be there Monday. Yep. So, um, all right. And, uh, yeah, so we, we plan to be back next Thursday. Um, in the meantime, follow us on, uh, on Facebook. Uh, you can subscribe on iTunes, Podbean, and YouTube. Actually, is it subscribe on Facebook? Can you subscribe on Facebook or you, you just follow? follow? You okay. follow. All right. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. We like all the follows. We so. like the follows too. Definitely. Yeah. Um, it's the most likely way you'll actually get notified of us doing a podcast. <laughs> it I think. actually is. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so subscribe to the other places, uh, like and share. Um, comments are appreciated, and uh, you know it'll take me a week to respond because, like, you only check it once a week. Yeah, <laughs> um, but you yeah. know I, I will. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess that's everything. But uh, all of that stuff, all the interactions help us, um, help us get it in front of more people, and uh, and we appreciate that. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, we'll be back next week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later.